Wagwan, what a guan. It's your girl Tash, and this is a special voiceover for all my YouTube subscribers. Big up on yourself, you don't know up up. If you are a new subscriber and you're not so familiar with this channel and you don't know who I am, my name is Tash and I am a short ear braider located in London, United Kingdom. And you can find my contact details in the description box below. If you are in London or you plan to travel to London to book an appointment with me, you can also message me on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. So guys, I am voicing over this video in real time. So I'm just going to be talking you guys through the process as I am watching the video of me doing the hairstyle. So I'm just going to be talking you through it as I do the hair. So this is a 4C air texture and the level of shrinkage is up to 75%, which is a lot of shrinkage. So one of my most frequently asked question is how do you get your stitch braids to look so clear and neat on hair textures like this, that is very kinky. Uh, full of shrinkage and short as well and there's a technique that I use and I want to share that with you guys whether you are a beginner or a professional this technique is um, one of the best technique to use when trying to stitch braid on hair textures like this because the reality is that hair as short as this and has this many shrinkage it's very very hard to achieve stitch braids that look very clear and neat so this technique will help you and you don't need to blow dry the hair as much because a lot of people tend to blow dry the hair or straighten the hair out so that they can achieve very neat and clear stitch braids and you don't have to do that i don't usually blow dry the hair unless it's necessary if i don't wash a client here where I need to dry it quickly with a blow dryer. I don't usually use blow dryer and I don't have a problem with not using a blow dryer because you know I'm a short ear braider. I can grip hair as short as two centimeter and kinky whether, whether the hair is kinky straight or whatever it doesn't bother me. I can braid it either way but the reality is that hair that is as thick as this is very very hard to achieve stitch braids where you can actually see the lines and i've actually had clients come to me and they said or oh, other hairdressers said that my hair is too thick and it's too coarse and it's too kinky to do stitch braids so i am here to show you guys this technique that i use to achieve my stitch braids without blow drying the hair and without straightening in the hair out I believe that blow drying is not very good for the hair so try not to blow dry your hair unnecessary especially air texture like this which is very kinky and full of coils it's not healthy to use a blow dryer so anyways guys let's stop talk about that now and jump into the tutorial so you're gonna had your gel on both side of this the hair that you section out you know just to make sure that you have a nice little paste there and the gel that i'm using is the shine and jam gel the gel um in the kind of orange and yellow bottle i find that one the best one to use so yes braid um two three times before parting out your stitch just to make sure that you got a nice old there to begin with so you part your stitch out to the right, you add that in, and you part your stitch to the left, and you add that in. So now the trick is to braid two times before adding your next stitch. So part to the right, add that in, part to the left, add that in, and now braid one or two times before adding another stitch. Part to the right, add that in, Part to the left, add that in. Now braid two times at least before adding your next stitch. So the purpose of braiding at least two times before 
part in your next stitch is um, so that we leave a gap between each stitch and that's the trick in making the lines visible on this hair texture and I also find that this method it lasts longer so you'll find that your stitch braids will last, last much much longer so um, guys if you like this technique that I'm showing you right now um, I'll also make another video where I show you how to add the extensions in with this method so guys if you if you like the method if you find it easy um, please drop a comment below and um, it's, it's just good to comment and just let me know because you know of course I'm thinking about making another video where I show you guys how to add the extension in using this method so if you comment and let me know what you think about the video so far and if you do want me to make another video well that will encourage me more to go and make the video so please comment whatever you're thinking whether negative or positive you know I take every comment into consideration so please comment guys so I'm gonna um move on now to the next one and i'm going to try and talk you through the next braid you know much better than i did earlier <laughs> so um another thing i wanted to say to you guys is that the reason why i parted the hair in the center is to it's kind of a guideline right there because i know that i want to make three braids on the left and three braids on the right but without that guideline i could go over the center of the head with um my three braids say for example i'm putting three braids on the left i could go over the center and then the whole hairstyle is gonna look uneven so i always like to section my my the, the clients here from the center of the head and just use that straight line as a guideline so i know exactly the density that i'm gonna be making my three braids on the left and so that when I go over to the right and I make my three braids and I'll have a equal head of hair, yeah? So I have a equal hairstyle. The hairstyle will look equal. It won't look too um, leany, leany to one side, you know? So um, that's, that, that's part in the center is my guideline and, you know, my technique, whether I'm doing the pop sum braid or I'm going backwards or I'm doing straight corners going backwards, I always try to use that guideline. And um, it's a good technique as well to use if you are a, a beginner. You know, I mean, of course I could do it without the guideline, but, you know, I always try to use that guideline, you know, which is very helpful. So, um, as I said, guys, just, you know, use your gel to paste on both sides as you normally do. And just make sure that parting is clear and the gel also helps to help you to clear the parting because once you section out the hair um, and you use the gel to paste the hair down, then you can see much clear, clearer how to part the line straighter because there might be little ears in between there and the gel will show you the little ears you know crossing over the line that you need to clear up so the gel does really help to make the lines look clearer because you're able to see better when you use the gel to paste the air down so as you can see this client's hair is very very kinky and you know for your information we did blow dry the hair but you know, it's like after a few seconds here, just go back kinky. As I said, it's just the way the client here is. So yes, yeah, just begin and gonna take your first section. As you can see, I'm gonna braid around three times to make sure that that first, first one is, is tight. And then I grip to the right, I bring that in and then I grip it to the left. And I bring that in. Well, I didn't have to grip it that time. The line went straight across. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, when the hair is as thin as it was, when the line is as thin as it was at the beginning, sometimes you part and it just goes straight across. Okay. Okay, so I'm braiding one, two times. And then I part 
to my right get my fingernail part it to my left and then I braid two times and I repeat the method so guys um if you don't have a long pinky fingernail this method can be very hard because trust me I'm not really a person that grows my nails very long but I always try to have that little pinky finger where um, I let the nail grow out a little bit longer so it'd be easier for me to section. So even if you don't have, if you're, not, you know, if it, if you're not a person like me who, sorry, um, so even if you don't like having long nails, you can just grow your pinky fingers just a little bit. It doesn't have to be very long, but you just need something that can help you to um, part the line um, better. And if not, you can also use a tail comb to help you. I mean, it's much longer when you're stopping every second to grab the comb and using the comb to part the hair. It's very, very long, but it is an option for you if you don't want to grow your pinky fingernail. Uh, if you're not a type of person that um, usually braid with fingernails. I mean, it's a, it's a longer process using a comb. So um, if you can just grow the pinky nail alone and just practice that way, it will be much, much quicker and easier. So some parts of this client here is much shorter than other parts. So is here is kind of uneven. So as I get to some section, it becomes quite difficult to join my stitch because some sections um, are more shorter. So just continue with this technique. Part to the right, grab it into the left, and we're gonna braid two times at least before joining our another stitch, just to make sure that we leave a gap between those lines. There you go to the left and in. Make sure that you leave that gap. And guys, as you get to the end of the braid, you don't have to keep sectioning out those lines because as you get to the end at the back of the neck where the hair is usually shorter, um, and it's not going to be that visible anyways. So you might as well just start cornering as normal until you get to the end. So another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and you know, I've had this question so many times and I said, I'm going to respond to this. Um, people always ask me the difference between, um, stitch braids and cornrows. And the difference between cornrows and stitch braid is that cornrows are a traditional style of braids in which the hair is braided very close to the scalp using an under and upward motion to make a continuous raised row. Cornrows are often done in simple straight lines as the term implies, but they can also be styled in elaborate geometric designs. On the surface, Stitch braids look like traditional cornrows, but the difference is subtle. With stitch braids, it's just a matter of a slightly different technique to achieve the stitches in the braid. This technique that I'm using right now, as I said, um, is one of the best te technique for this ear texture to get your lines looking clear. Cause I know a lot of people, they watch so much videos and they don't understand the different ear textures and some people don't understand that it's not every ear texture you can achieve the same hairstyle or the same look you know every ear texture has to be treated differently so um this technique is one of the best techniques as i said for the ear texture um that i'm doing right now
part to the right make that look line with the fingernail to the left and braid one two times before making your next stitch part to the right grab that in part to the left grab that in and braid one or two times before making that stitch and as I said before, you know, different people has different technique, but I don't want you guys to be confused, you know, thinking, you know, how comes I'm doing the same thing that I saw that hairstylist do and my stitch braid is not coming out as good as theirs. And guys, that's just because that person in the video, their hair texture might be completely different to the hair texture that you're working with. So please bear that in mind. So it's not very hard um, to do if you're a beginner. You know, you just take your time and find the, uh, the angle that works for you because everybody also braid differently, you know. So you, it's very important, you know, for beginners to find the angle that's comfortable for them because um, the process itself can be um, uncomfortable just trying to maintain a firm grip. So as you can see, as I come to um, the center of the head, the hair is a little bit short there, so it makes it a bit more difficult for me to braid two times and then join the hair. So you can see guys, inside there is um, very, very short. And I have to braid two times and then join it, which is very, very difficult. So it's important to maintain your grip maintain a firm grip so that the hair doesn't go loose. You know, so as you can see, um, my stitches are looking very, very clear. I'm halfway through the hair and my stitches are looking clear. And the, pr and the reason for that is because I braid one, two times before joining my next stitch and that um, leaves a gap between my um, stitches. And as I said before earlier, as you get down to the, um, the end of the braid, you don't have to keep parting, parting, out the stitch because we're coming to the end of it now and we need to seal the braid so in order to seal the braid as we get to the end you just have to just con roll normal so just normal con roll down to the end just to seal that braid down to the end there and perfect so now we are halfway through the hairstyle i'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand side that i did on the left so i'm gonna do the same thing on the right as I did on the left and um, we have about another 20 minutes to go inside this video so I'm not gonna keep talking talking because really I, I, I don't really know what else to say so um, guys I'm just gonna be um, playing some music while I do the other side so please just continue the same technique as I did on the other side and you can just play your own music if you don't like my music just play your own music and just practice so this video is for practice and i hope that my special voiceover was very helpful for you guys and please don't forget to comment your thoughts on this tutorial and my explanation and as i said i do want to make another video where i show you guys how to add the extension in with this technique so please drop your comment and communicate with me. Let me know, you know, your thoughts and, and how you're feeling about the technique. And guys, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok to keep up with my latest hairstyles and to get updates with my of my clients' hair growth journeys. 
and also if you haven't subscribed as yet please press that subscribe button and don't forget to turn the notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my posts okay guys okay so i'm just gonna play the music and let you guys practice